Does this sound familiar to you? You work hard. You're juggling work life, home life, social life, projects, kids, parents, all the other things. Appointments, meetings, and shifts keep getting added to your calendar. Paperwork is piling up. Maybe you've said yes to a few people or situations you really wanted to say no to. You realize you're not just burning the candle on both ends, but you've added some wicks, making the candle burn faster. You think, if I can just get through X or 2X, I can take a break. You promise yourself you will never do this again, only to find yourself back in a cycle again. Or maybe you don't see an end in sight at all. You're in burnout. Burnout is prevalent in officers and spouses. It's hard to figure out how to adjust when many times you feel like you don't have the power to say no or to take a break. You just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other. You suck it up, buttercup, and you keep going. I have found myself there many, many times, and you'll see it because there'll be breaks in getting my podcast released. Last year, my friend Yolanda Harper released a book called Soul Sabbatical. My take? It must be nice to have time to take a break from your life and have a sabbatical. Then she asked me to review her book. To say it shifted my thinking was an understatement. And I walked away with some really great insight, enough to bring her on the podcast to impact you. So just a warning on this one that there is some foul language because Yolanda gets a little raw. So I know you're going to enjoy this conversation on burnout and the cycle and walk away with something you can use. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Code for Couples podcast. Welcome to the Code for Couples podcast, focusing on topics for law enforcement officers and couples to keep you and your relationship connected, resilient, and code four. Now, your host, law enforcement expert, Cindy Doyle, author of Hold the Line and My Wife. Hey there, and welcome back to the Code for Couples podcast. I'm your host, Cindy Doyle. Thank you for joining me today. I today have somebody who is uh, special to me. I feel like as you listen, you're probably always like, Cindy, you know everybody. I think I network a lot is what I do. And I get to know people and I bring them to you because I trust them with you. And Yolanda Harper is one of the people outside of our direct LEO community, but understands our community so well. She is a licensed clinical social worker. She is an author. She owns a practice. Uh, She specializes in working with trauma. She has worked with many veterans and I think it's military personnel, I can say, work with their trauma. In fact, she helped me get connected into the Accelerated Resolution Therapy uh, community, which has helped me help my first responders in my office. But today we are here to talk about her book that she has authored. Yolanda, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Oh my God, Cindy. (laughs) One of my favorite people on the planet. And I am so excited to be able to just spend time with you today in your community. This is going to be great. So Yolanda wrote a book called Soul Sabbatical. And I think you released it the end of last year, October around last year. And initially, I was aware of when she went on the sabbatical. And I thought to myself, maybe a little judgy, and thought to myself, oh, that might be, must be nice to take a sabbatical, right? But then I got her book and I read her book and I resonated with it in such a way that I thought, oh, this isn't just about checking out for, you know, four months at a time. This is about how do you take care of yourself? And this is something that we need to do. And one of the threads that I'm dropping throughout the year as far as podcasts, which is how do we take care of ourselves during this time? And that's why I wanted to bring her on. I want to talk about her book and how you can then implement some of these techniques to keep yourself healthy healthy and prevent burnout. So 
let's talk about where the idea of this came from. So I want you to tell a little bit about your story. Oh, and I probably should back up. Is there anything that I missed on your bio that no. you want to add out? Okay, okay, good, good. No, good. no, no. Yeah, you did a beautiful job. And yes, I am kind of ansil- ancillarily. <laughs> ancillarily. Yes, that there you word. Go. Uh, with the community, with the work that I've done with military veterans, For I sure. have done some some work with uh, law enforcement and first responders through kind of all uh, of that as well. Um, and so it's a community that's near and dear to my heart. My background in that is that I am an army brat and also a, you know, a former military spouse. And so I understand duty and service. Yes. Yeah. And the commitment that it takes on both For sides, sure. right? The Absolutely. As a yeah. spouse that when you're running the house and your partner's not around because they're working. Deployed for nine months. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and what we have too is like right now, specifically here in Texas and also nationally, we have law enforcement that's getting deployed. So we have um, troopers that are being deployed to the border. And then we have our border patrol folks that are up on the northern border that are getting deployed. So it's this weird overlap Venn diagram middle part there as far as deployment that we understand too. So I know that you connect to that. So let's... And I just want to say, if I may, go like for it. You, were, you were one of the first people that I trusted handing over the, a copy of this book to, to say... Cindy, can you give this a read and and tell me what you think? So thank you for that. Yeah. I'm going to (laughs) cry. Oh my gosh. Thank you for honoring me with that. I know I told you, I was like, and I think I wrote it in the review because I did a review for it too. It was like, oh my gosh, I connect to this in so many different ways. I was like the temper tantrums that I threw along the way. And, you know, y'all listening know if you've read my book that, if you've read even the intro chapter to my book, you knew that I threw temper tantrums along the way. And so it definitely connects. Thank you for honoring me with that. I had no idea. Wow. Yeah. Well, well let's well, you've been part of my life, an important part of my life. So so yeah, my I mean my journey, which is what you asked. Mm-hmm. Kind of, yeah, let's go back to that. <laughs> if you want to go back to the question. <laughs> yeah, I in it, it just kind of long story short, in 2021, I my husband and I took a couple of days. Um, we went to the panhandle of Florida. I stepped down onto a beach and I was like, oh my God, I can breathe, which mm. which in and of itself is like, oh, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. But very quickly followed a sheer panic of like, holy shit, I didn't realize that I wasn't breathing. Yeah, I understand that. And that, that is kind of, that is an experience of burnout for me. Like that, that kind of not being connected with myself to even understand that I hadn't been breathing. For me, it's this indoctrination in hustle culture and the way that I over function, mm-hmm. that I have a tendency to over function, that I get caught in this loop of productivity or achieving some goal, which just leads to the next metric, the next goal, the next mm-hmm. thing, you know? Yeah. So, and then on top of that, I think when we're talking service and duty, it's when that goes kind of southward, that goes awry. Mm-hmm. You, that that value of service and duty comes at an expense of recognizing duty to ourselves. So it's like at some point, I had to recognize the impact of the work that I was doing. And, and trauma work is like, you know, not for the faint of heart. Mm-mm. What happens in my office and the things that we process with the things that I process with clients in my office are like, you know, lifetime movies or whatever, you know, it's like the worst. <laughs> I of think all everybody humanity. listening can, can connect to that in some way, right? Because of what they go through. And then, you know, as, as a clinician, right, we, a lot of times are sitting with our folks and um, as they're going through that, but, you know, as the same thing with spouses, if you're listening to it. Or even if you're imagining what your spouse is going through, or as a officer, what you do go through. Can I back up? You said, you said um, a duty to your duty to others, right? But then what we do is we forego that duty to self, and that is probably a really that's spot on 
I think, because when we look at our community, we it is a duty to others because we're serving our communities, right? So as you're serving the community, many times what we wind up doing or what I've seen officers do and even my husband do is it's like there's this doubling down mm-hmm. with the serving to the community, serving to the department. And then I think also as spouses and as families, and you can speak to this too, like spouses and family, it's like, well, we just got to keep going. Put one foot in front of the other. Like look for that next time where they have time off or that vacation. And we just keep doubling down. And we've. it's hard to think about taking care of ourselves because you are in that grind, which we're going to get to. But- well, and we're not even told that that's a thing to do. Right. Mm. It's like if you do that, then that is counter the mission. You're you're so right. Yes. And it's looked upon. It's changing, but it's looked upon as that somehow that's not a commitment <laughs> to the to the serving that you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. 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 If you were really doing your job and if you really cared, then you wouldn't even think about time off. <laughs> right. Time off to yes. go to a doctor's appointment, much less time off to to rest and recover. Yeah. Yeah. So you're on a beach, you have this moment, you recognize it. What from there? Yeah. So I did what I what I normally do is like, okay, well, I'll deal with that. Like I, I knew that we had a business retreat coming up. I, you know, we were gonna be spending some time in Utah. I was like, I will just table that for them. And that was my pattern. Like I would kind of get a glimpse of this. I'd come up just enough for like a gasp of air before Mm -hmm. I went right back down. A little, Mm -hmm. you know, pushing. If you think of like an instant pot, like you push the button and the steam releases. Yes. And then you just go right back into it. So Ah. I was like, let me just kind of compartmentalize that. I'll deal with it when we get to Utah. And then when we got to Utah, I sat down and I was, I did a practice that that I do regularly. And that is called a, a perfect day exercise. And we can talk more about it. But, you know, I was just like journaling about what I'd like for my day to look like mm-hmm. and realize that nothing that was happening in my days was anything like that. Mm. And I broke down into tears and I basically cried for the next week. Mm. Like, because I think that it was that recognition of if I don't start doing something different. Mm-hmm. What's it going to look like? I'm not going to be in this for the long game if I don't start doing something different. Mm. And I'm the only one who can do something different here. Mm-hmm. I'm the only one that can make these changes. Man, I, like I'm emotional. I'm like, oh, I connect to that in so many different ways. Just the release of pressure in this lifestyle, right? The release of pressure. But then also, like, if I don't, if you don't pay attention to the self, to yourself, how are you going to be in it for the long game? And I think that's something that our community struggles with a lot because I know I talk about it a lot. Like, hey, you can't just cross that finish line into retirement and think everything's going to be okay. It has to be taken care of along the way. And I hope that message when with, you listening that that message is getting through in some of what I've sprinkled in throughout the year so far. So can I piggyback on what you just said, Cindy? Absolutely. Go for it. Part of this has been like over the years in my therapy practice, I have seen all kinds of people in that retirement age. Yeah. Who are like, this was supposed to be the golden age. This mm-hmm. is when we this is this is why we work this is why I worked so hard. Mm-hmm. And it looks nothing like what they hoped mm-hmm. because of their health, because their relationship is shot for all number of reasons. And then we, my husband and I and, and, and our family lived it out because his father, my husband's father, my father-in-law, dear, precious man to me, died of ALS right as he was entering into that stage. He oh, was wow. active due to military for mm-hmm. decades, mm-hmm. right? Same thing continuing on that path so that at whatever point he'd have all of the pension, like all of that stuff that he'd worked so hard for. And when the time came, it was done. Yeah. I mean, the reality was he w- he's not here to enjoy it. Right. And so we wind up in these patterns of coming up from air, letting off the steam. It's funny because I've always said like letting air out of the balloon. 
And so that's <laughs> very similar. Like, let's just let, so we don't pop, right? <laughs> like you let air out of the balloon. Yeah, you let air out of the balloon just so you could you could uh, expand a little bit more, but it's just, it never just kind of whew, deflates and takes that breath. And so that winds up being our pattern and it winds up taking a lot out of us in so many different ways. Yeah. So you wind up in Utah and you have this aha moment, like you are off course, which so yes, we relate to. (laughs) And I had been joking around for a long time about taking a sabbatical. I had no idea what that meant. They were just words that I used. I think it was like, I want an excuse to take extended time off (laughs) without without calling it a vacation and seeming lazy or whatever, you know? So, but that's when I really started thinking like, what would it look like or what would it take to whatever it looks like, right? Mm -hmm. For for me, it was a certain period of time, whatever works for each person. It's not, it doesn't need to be an extended period of time. It needs to be an intentional period of time. So what does that start to look like? How do I put some framework around that? And commit to it because my thing was, if I'm going to do this quote unquote sabbatical thing, then I not I, I can't half ass it and expect things to be different. Like I need to be fully committed to whatever this thing is to figure out how to do things differently. So I love that you said it's not ex- it's not necessarily an extended period of time. It's an intentional period of time, and that is really important to remember just the, in, it's the intention behind it. Uh-huh. Love that. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, then we started putting plans and my husband and I started putting plans in place. And um, then I did have that sabbatical experience. And, and I took what I learned during that intentional period of time that happened for me to be extended. Mm-hmm. And, and I put it into like these daily practices for myself so that that is not just an event, but a practice. Yeah. And that's where I want to go to for sure. Mm -hmm. When we're thinking about, would you have considered it burnout? Because that's what I think it's okay. She (laughs) she was like, ah, yeah. 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 But here's the thing. There's a lot of shame. I think this is changing too, but there's been Mm -hmm. a lot of shame, I think, in like the service community. Yes about using the word burnout, because if we are aligned with our mission, then it's not going to take a toll on us, right? At least that, that was my experience. Like I can't call this burnout because, because that means I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. I think it's being talked about more and more. I think, um, and I was doing another podcast with somebody yesterday and we were talking about that in our community too, the words compassion fatigue are being tossed about as well like this element of secondary traumatic stress. But I think it's very different. It is very different than burnout, right? So burnout is over an extended period of time. And that pattern of burnout, you know, one of the things that you, when I heard you on the beach, what I heard was disconnected to like being disconnected from what's going on in my body. And I, I mean, I could be wrong, but my thought is, well, that's a way that we just keep pushing right? It, we just disconnect. And many times I'm talking, I'm talking about like, there are times where people are checked out from the neck down. I do it too. And so, yeah. We're conditioned to though. Mm-hmm. I mean, like in our society, that's, that's how we learn to operate. Right. And so it takes a real reconditioning and a real practice of like checking in below the neck and getting acquainted with our, and even getting like familiar and comfortable with doing that. Mm-hmm. So burnout and any any other signs or symptoms that you would say that maybe people need to look for or that you you can look back and see like, oh, there's one that I ignored. Yeah. So definitely the exhaustion piece. Okay. That for me, it's this hyper focus, like the dog with the bone. Mm. Like, you know, I'm just like, I've got my jaws on this thing <laughs> and I cannot let go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's I know like, what you mean. It consumes, it consumes every moment. It's never in like it, there's this sense of like I'm not doing enough. I need to be doing more. That overinvestment. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And one of the ways that I describe it, also by overfunctioning, is the way that I tend to 
you know that phrase, like throw spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks? Yes. So it's not just, it's like I have a pot of spaghetti that I'm throwing against the wall to see what sticks. And I've also got four other pots boiling on the stove so that they're ready to go so that I can throw that. So I'm not even paying attention to what's actually sticking on the wall. I just keep slinging shit. Okay. (laughs) I love that analogy. But I get what you're saying. Like being in that state, it's like, oh, I don't have time to figure it out. Like there's just too many pots boiling. Yeah. 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 And some, one of these things is going to work. Mm-hmm. Also for me, and, and a big component of burnout is either not having the support to do our job okay, or having the support and not using it and not taking advantage of it, not getting the support that we need. Yeah. Yeah. And I can, and that job can also be, you know, as far as taking care of the household and parenthood, right? Because if you think about, you know, you think about what our families have to do many times, they're single parenting it a lot of times. And they, it's not that they don't have somebody that maybe wants to help. It's just that the job or the, the time away doesn't allow for it. And so maybe even not even have somebody to ask too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or like the person that I would think to ask, oh, they've got so much going on for themselves. Oh, I've never said that. Right. I don't want to be a burden. That's what I hear, right? I don't want to, and you've said it too. You know, you've said it, um, that I don't want to be a burden to somebody else. That seems like I don't want to be too much. I don't want to impose. Yeah. I'm the one to shoulder this responsibility. Like yeah. I'm the only one that like, gets my job to shoulder this responsibility. That's and toxic. Heard, yeah. It is. We and it's what we do. Human. I do it too. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But we're meant to do this life. You and I are relational people. Like that's tough. Yes top priority for both of us. And we forget that this, like, that's part of relationality. Mm -hmm. It is. And we allow people, when we ask for help, we allow them to show up for us, right? And it's a way of loving us or a way of taking care of us. And I think sometimes when we're in that state, a lot of times when we're in that state, we forget that because of where we are, that people can say no. (laughs) They're going to say no if they can't. And you can say no if you can't. But we have to ask. Right. And it's, and sometimes that'd be hard. Sometimes when you don't know who to ask, um, maybe there's some prep beforehand that needs to happen. So you do know who to ask. And maybe we could talk about that. Towards yeah, the end. for sure. Yeah, for sure. And, and on the flip side of that coin, like you just mentioned, you and I both know that we're the first people to say, yes, I will help you if someone comes and asks us for help. Mm-hmm. So it's like, we have to practice doing that on the other side, on the flip side of things, kind of like that value of service, you know, and how that goes both ways. When, I, I'm curious because I know you were in the military community and law enforcement, we have a built-in community in a way, right? Because we have the families that our spouses work with. We have, we have this community that's built in. I think part of the struggle is geographic, at least in Texas, right? Because you can be like 30 miles away from the PD and still work, right? So there's geographic nature of it. And also, the, I think communities have changed a whole lot. Like the idea of getting together and showing up and figuring out who is in that community and who can you lean on and who's going to show up. I remember a, a wife that contacted me, I think I was, I was going to say the middle of the night, but I think it was more like 1030. <laughs> That's the middle of the night. <laughs> I mean, and, and she's like, hey, I've I've got to go to the hospital. She was pregnant at the time. She's like, there's something wrong. I've got to go to the hospital. Can you please just come watch the kids? I was like, who's taking you to the hospital? And we were spouses. And so I showed up for her and I dropped everything to go watch her kids and sleep on the couch with them. But if you don't have those communities established, then that becomes a problem. And I assume it's the same way in the military where like you have an option to establish those communities and you don't. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and to your point, I think that has even shifted since COVID. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's being intentional about our communities too. Ooh. And cycle that word back around intentional. There you go. Yes. So it kind of boils down to being intentional. And because I love that you circled that word back around. So being intentional and thinking and assessing 
where we are as individuals, kind of knowing our own warning signs and symptoms and flags, but then also like being intentional ahead of time too. Yeah. You know, people ask like, what do you do on sabbatical? Like what, what mm, was it that we yeah. what do, you do, right? Mm-hmm. And so for me, you know, I thought I want to focus more on how I want to feel. This is what burnout feels like. Overwhelmed, anxious, dog with a bone, exhausted. Oh, by the way, another big one that I didn't mention. Oh, yeah. This is huge. The fact that I am a brat. Oh, what? when I When I'm burned out, <laughs> I'm okay. a brat. So it starts as brat and then it shifts to like total asshole. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So full disclosure, when Yolanda's in burnout, it's like everything becomes about me and like, why aren't you helping me like make Almost, things easier? Yeah. It's a little victim, right? Like poor me. Yes. Yeah. I was <laughs> just hearing that when you said that. I've got important things to do. And why are you not making my life easier? <laughs> Even though I'm the one that, who is making the decision to do like these things and be burned out. So anyway, so it's like, while I'm on sabbatical, um, I want to focus on having more peace in my life, being more joyful, being more connected with people who are important to me, getting an, an idea about who my community is and like re like shifting time and energy around, right? Yeah. We are finite human beings. I, I keep trying to break the time space continuum. <laughs> I haven't figured out a way to do that yet. So, you know, it's like, okay, if I only have a finite amount of energy and time and resources, how do I start to shift those around? And so I took this big picture of like, how do I want to feel? Mm -hmm. And then I made a list of some of the things that helped me to feel that way. Oh my gosh. And then I added to the list some things that I was curious about that I hadn't done before. So I think this is really important because when we when we're thinking about burnout, especially when you're in that mode, I think everybody doesn't know where to start. And even when you know the idea of sabbatical or take a vacation, but you're reframing this a little bit. And so what you said was, how do I want to feel? So it's almost like I talk about a compass a lot of times. Like how do you, you know, behaviors and belief drive your values and your goals. And so in a way, you're like, all right, how do I, you said, how do I want to feel? What, in what way do I want to feel differently? And so in feeling differently, what are the behaviors or activities that I need to implement in order to feel that way differently? Yeah. That could be challenging. Yeah, absolutely. That that's where the intentionality and like slowing the fuck down and like <laughs> being connected with ourselves, right? Yeah. And so much of our typical response, especially in burnout, is flat out numbing. Yes. Like we just go offline, right? Yeah. And so what drives us to numb? And what is some comfort like what are our behaviors when when I when we numb? When I numb, it's like hours of binge watching trash TV or scrolling social media or eating, you know, a tub of ice cream or like whatever it is. Scrolling right? on your phone. Uh-huh. Yeah. Doom scrolling, like all mm-hmm. of those things. But what are the activities that when I do them, I feel filled. I feel like the emptiness that is happening within me is not so empty. Yeah. And I feel better connected to myself and the people around me. It sometimes, and sometimes that's hard to shift because, like, I'm just thinking in my brain, it's like, oh, but that other thing that I want to do is so much easier because it's what I've been doing. Right. And so I know that doing, hmm, here's an example for me. I know that putting my phone out in the kitchen and plugging it in because I do have an alarm clock, I don't need my phone there is way better for me. But there's a part of me that's like, I'm just going to take my phone to bed and doom scroll because that's, it's a habit. I don't feel better when I look at my phone and I'm like, I've been doom scrolling for two hours when I could have been asleep. Right. Ah. You feel worse. And so that's what, that's what we get some clarity about. Like, okay, it's up to me to make these changes. It's up to me to have a better understanding of this Mm -hmm. and to choose the thing that is going to 
in the long term be the better option for me. So it's like, okay, I can sit and watch trash TV for the next four hours. Yep. Or I can get out in nature and go for a hike. Yep. And at the end of that four hours, I'm going to feel a hell of a lot better than at the end of four hours. I just feel like trash and a pile of shame yes. that I've just wasted four hours. Waste. That's what I always think. I'm like, I just wasted yeah. all that time. That's the that's mm-hmm. the exact message that goes through my head. Yeah. 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 And I think when so it, that definitely bleeds over when we're looking at officers coming home and needing to reconnect, it's easy to slide into that downside of the hypervigilance cycle because they're tired anyway. And instead being intentional of like, yes, you can have some downtime, but do that in an intentional manner that when you get done at the end of that downside, that you feel better. So maybe you've snuggled with kids or maybe you've had a conversation with your spouse or maybe you burned off some of that cortisol by taking a walk, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then at the end of that, yeah, now I feel I feel grounded, I feel reconnected to myself, I feel reconnected to the people who are most important to me. I have a sense of peace, I have a sense of joy, and mm-hmm. it's 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 really getting nuanced with those things because a lot of times when we think of like happiness or joy or whatever, we think of like massively grand, like yeah. impressive like Instagram, you know, like whatever. <laughs> yes. But for me, the most beautiful moments of joy in my life are stopping to look at a sunset. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like the snuggle with the dog or with the kids or with the partner, like really allowing those things to penetrate our beings and our souls. Being present is what you're talking about too, right? Like being present and absorbing that beautiful moment. And that's a practice in itself because I think if people aren't used to that, they're kind of like, what am I supposed to be doing, right? <laughs> so so it's almost like, so let's let's use a sunset and I'm going to pick on a sunset because um, if y'all if y'all follow my husband at all on Instagram, he is food and sunsets. like that's it. That's what he posts on. So i'm I'm seeing this sunset or a sunrise, maybe. What does one do to absorb that? Can I tell a story about that? Oh yeah, I'd love that. Story time. Okay, so story time. Um, so when um, my husband and I have three kids, they're grown now, but um, when I think my middle was probably seven years old, our middle son was seven years old, we went camping. And, you know, three young kids, I'm like trying to get everything together at the campsite, like blah, blah, blah. And he says, mom, look, come, look at the sunset. Come, come and watch the sunset with me. And I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like, do you, like, do you want to have, do you want to have food? Do you want to have a place to sleep tonight? Like, do you see all the things that need to be done? And he was just so persistent. And so finally I was like, for the love of God, I will sit and watch the sunset with you. (laughs) And I did. And like, there, something clicked and there was a, there was a moment of like truly taking in the sunset and allowing some awe and marvel at the beauty Mm. of a sunset and the peace in that moment and sharing that with someone who is so important to me. Yeah. And to be perfectly honest with you, there are still there's still those times that in the back of your head, there's there's that voice that's like, oh my God, you got so much shit to do. Would you like, like there's a, it's a freaking sunset? Like it right, happens every right. night. <laughs> and yeah, it happens every night. And look, we're missing out on an opportunity every night mm-hmm. to just pause for whatever, five minutes. And just sit with it. And just be with it and be with ourselves. And in that moment, that's a little bit of like allowing our nervous system to settle mm. and not be so freaking jacked up, which is how we stay that leads to burnout, part of what leads to burnout. And having, so having those moments, being intentional about those moments, whether it's 
snuggling with your kids or the dog or the sunset or just enjoying the day is part of the way you heal or recover from that burnout. You know, you I was saying that as I was doing that and I smirked because I realized I had a moment like that. It was just really quickly that I was in my car. I had the sunroof open. I had the day day off. I wasn't seeing, it was a Friday. I was on my way to a massage. It was a gorgeous spring day and I have it going and I'm being snarky at traffic and like, rah, there's a stoplight. And in some moment, like at a stoplight, I thought, Cindy Doyle, you are ridiculous. It is a beautiful day. It is, you are on your way to a massage on a weekday. And like, what what are you doing? And like, I righted my mindset right there and instead just shifted to enjoying what was there. And I think that it's hard you know, especially for our officers to kind of think that way because they're so focused on having to observe what is wrong, right? We filter those things in anyway. And so to to stop and to say, no, I'm just going to, I'm going to shift, my, being intentional about shifting this focus and shifting this behavior, it's right. really a practice. And It really and, is. And reminding ourselves, like, there's a time for that and absolutely. there's a time for this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like a time of like being focused on what is wrong, that's life or death. So absolutely, absolutely yeah. there's a time for that. Mm-hmm. And then there's a time to release that and come and come to this. And it is a practice. And just like anything that we practice, we get better with it the more with the, we practice it. The other thing I heard while you were doing saying that, and I think it leads to one of your points, is that you had to let go of setting up campsite, setting up dinner, and you let go of that for that moment to go do it. And what is it? I know sometimes we get caught up in what we have to do. Like you said, like in the back of your mind, like I got all this shit to do, right? So how do we, do you have a method that we could use from moving that from like, no, I've got to focus on all this stuff I have to do or the house has to be perfect or everybody has to be doing this certain thing to that more intentional aspect of like stepping aside and watching the sunset? So (laughs) for me, this practice is multifaceted. So one, it's a practice of permission slips and like giving myself permission. And along with that comes some mantras that I kind of create for myself. Okay. We might need and to talk about permission slips though, before we go yeah, on. Yeah, let's Can we talk do permission, about permission slips? Slip. Yeah. So permission slip. Tell me mm-hmm. more. Yeah. What, 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 do you, what do you mean a permission slip? <laughs> like get a piece yeah. of paper out and write it down? But like for real, like, like for our kids when they're going on a field trip. Like I give little Johnny permission to go on this field trip and have a good time. Okay. And so, and so we can give ourselves permission to sometimes, and, and there's like some power for me in writing it down, permission to slow down, permission to have a conversation with Cindy without being kind of consumed with my worry about performance and mm-hmm. just like be present in the moment and talk. Uh, permission to slow the fuck down. I'm even thinking like permission not to be perfect. Or permission to not have the perfect house or permission. That's a that's something that I gave myself a long time ago is that and my husband still sometimes he's like, is the house okay? I'm like, I mean, they're friends, don't they? In their house, a little lived in. I mean, like everything doesn't have to be put up in its place and everything's immaculate anymore. Like I just gave that up. But that's the intention. That's kind of reprioritizing things. Like I can spend time and energy and, and like resources mm-hmm. on making the house perfect and miss out on connection. Mm-hmm. Which one is more important to me? Yeah. Ultimately, like in this moment, it might feel like the house is more important, but ultimately what's more important? Right. God, it's been no, no, I'm not saying like, don't ever clean your house. Right. Like right, we're not saying sure. that, for but sure. we are yeah. saying like, Hey, in that moment was, is it yeah. more important to, can you give yourself permission to put things aside and do something else that seems intentional or maybe is like in the moment as opposed yeah. to in like get to the house later or well, and that, those and kinds of things, right? Like the, 
yeah, you hit on the perfectionism. Like at some point, at some point it's good enough. Yeah. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's good enough. I know. Right. Yeah. So permission for it to be good enough. Right. That's a good one. And so sometimes it is um, kind of the permission that I'm like, okay, all my job, all the jobs are done for today. Mm -hmm. There are no jobs left for today. Mm -hmm. I know that there's still a to-do list a mile long. And guess what? The to-do list is always going to be a mile long because we just keep adding to it anyway. Right. Right. So understanding that, you know, so does that help with the, the yes, idea that helps with the permission slips and then you were moving yeah. into mantra, but I didn't want to go like zoom in past permission slips because right. that can be difficult, right. To give a permission slip. I think also in the nature of the work too, it's hard to just say, I have permission to not think about that until tomorrow especially when you're on call 24 seven, but exactly, but right. So that kind of gets in the way of giving some of those permission slips, but maybe it's, I have permission to, unless that phone goes off, I have permission to just be present with my family. I have permission to let these things go right now. Yeah, absolutely. Like my worrying about possibly getting a phone call isn't going to, is it going to help? Right. That's so true. That's so true. I mean, yeah. I remember the world of beepers and pagers. And so I had a pager for a couple of years when I worked at a right crisis center. And it was like, the pager could go off anytime. But I think that's kind of what we do with, anyway, yeah, I'll get off of that. But you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it doesn't do any good to worry about it. So just giving permission not to. Yeah, that's exactly kind of what leads to this burnout is like that, like the dog with the bone, like the that, you know, always, yeah, yeah. Always worrying about that. And sometimes the, the idea of permission slips and mantras kind of overlap because there mm-hmm. have been plenty, plenty of times that I have sat in a movie theater and just that like voice going on in the back. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't, I'm going to be here for the next two hours. Do you know what, you know what you could get done for the next two hours? <laughs> I've never said so that. Much shit done. <laughs> yeah. Or being on a, being on a trail hiking. Oh mm-hmm. my God, we're hiking six miles today. We're hiking 10. Oh my, that's so many hours. Like I love being on the trail, but there's so much stuff that I could get done. And then I had like my, my permission slip slash mantra is this is what happy people do. This is what happy people do. Okay. Okay. This is what happy people who are connected with the people that they love and aren't brats or assholes. This is what they do. Mm. People like you better when you don't lose your shit on them. (laughs) This is a way for you to not like build up that steam that you explode and lose your shit on people. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, in that I, I, I'm just kind of struck over and over again about how productivity becomes one of those things that we're supposed to accomplish over and over again. And yet it is not the productivity that keeps us healthy. Right. And so you're like, the productivity is joy. <laughs> like have some joy in this moment. You are supposed to be here. And so, yeah, that mantra being, this is where you're supposed to be, or this makes you less of an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that yeah. mantra is. Yes. Yeah. I like yeah. that. And I think if I may kind of piggyback on what you're saying about the productivity, mm-hmm. because there is always that. And and like we learn in our society that with especially with the hustle culture and the over functioning and like all of that, like the productivity is the measure of our value and worth. Yes. Yes. And that's understandable, but it's not true. Mm-hmm. And on the flip side of that, what I'd like to to intro or what I'd like to kind of throw out there is like the the flip side of that productivity is now we're now more than ever we're more aware of numbers like suicide. Oh yeah, absolutely. So it's like like this is that taking taking into account the impact on ourselves. Like there's an impact with all of this productivity focus mm-hmm. on on ourselves and, and on our officers and first responders. So suicide rates are a measure of that. But one of the things, the other things that aren't like measured is like how many people have heart attacks in these chronic illnesses yes. and how many marriages end up in divorce. Yes. And yeah. so that's the flip side of all of this focus on productivity. Yeah, you're exactly right. 
And there's research to back that up. I probably said this to y'all before, the average age for an officer to have a heart attack, 57. Yeah. And so that's what I, I joke with my husband. It's a joke, but not a joke. I'm like, oh, you're just a statistic because that's when he had his. And so it's all a buildup, right? So taking care of yourself along the way, being intentional about how you are doing your off time, or if you are a spouse, being intentional, I am making up words here, intentionable, being intentional about how you go through your day. And how you take care of yourself, because you're not going to be any good to your family or to your spouse if you are not taking care of yourself in some way. And I think many times what we wind up doing is saying, well, but I don't have a choice. And you're providing us with a choice. You're providing us with a simple choice of intention and a simple choice of things like permission slips and being present And mantras, which by the way, I thought that was so good the way you said your mantra, because I think a lot of people think mantras are like, gosh, darn it, I like myself, like those kinds of things. And your mantra was like, so the fuck down. (laughs) So, so I think like, it's good for people to hear like mantras are not, you know, some kind of uswa kind of a thing. It can just be, it's basically your self-talk. It's a phrase that you use in your self-talk that works for you right? Is what you're telling me. And if I, if I can add on and bring back a word that you used earlier, you said, I sense a little bit of victimhood in there. Mm, right? mm-hmm. And part of my mantra and kind of my self-talk is like, there aren't any victims. I don't do victims here. We, we have agency. I have agency. Ugh, that's so good. So when I feel that I have a choice. Of victim, yeah, yeah. I, when I feel that kind of victim, like there's nothing that I can do. Oh, no, no, sweetheart. <laughs> there, there is always there's always something, something you can do that's exactly even right even if it's the most minuscule little mm-hmm. step towards mm-hmm. our like even the agency of like no in this moment I can take a breath and look at the fucking sunset mm-hmm. yeah like there's always agency there's always something that we can do yeah yeah I think that's hard for people to hear at times and it's incredibly It's hard for me important. to hear. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I would much rather be a victim and just be like, everyone do what I want them to do. <laughs> or screw everybody, I quit. <laughs> right. That's, that's what it is too. Okay, so we have yeah. the permission slip. We have mm-hmm. mantra. Mm-hmm. Are there other tips, tools, tra- techniques that you would recommend yeah. for other people to do? Well, if you would like to have a little conversation about that perfect day exercise that I sure that I sure so would that okay. be helpful sure yeah that sounds very idealistic in my brain to have a perfect day it, so I'm curious well, about this what would I like my typical day to be okay typical regular day what time would I like to get up how would I like my morning to go what's the first thing that I do in the morning you know who am I spending time with what you know what are the activities right mm-hmm. and so. It is like a realistic kind of, you know, like I don't do a typical day where I'm like, I am on the beach in the Bahamas and this (laughs) is where I live and I don't have to work (laughs) and like all that. It is, you know, given that this is life and I have agency. Okay. So including the parameters of our life, what would that perfect day look like? Okay. I think that's really important because- Like the parameters of our life might be like, well, I have a job I have to get to at eight o'clock in the morning, right? I have kids that have to get to school at 730. So backing that up, but still looking within those parameters. Oh, okay. I'm glad you said that because in in my cynical mind, I was like, well, my ideal day would be I'd sleep in until I wake up. So like, that's not reality. Okay, good. I like this. Okay. But given the fact that I have to be at work by eight and I have to drop the kids off at school by 7.30, do I want to get up at, you know, 7.15 and rush out? The, like, is that my perfect way of starting? Is that an ideal way for me to start a day? Or for me, is it better to get up a little bit earlier, mm. have some time mm-hmm. just like to kind of ease into the day for myself mm-hmm. and then, you know, then be able to like be with the kids when they wake up and not lose my shit on them, whatever, you know? And right. then, you know, so just kind of filling in from there. 
But, okay. you know, at some point I did this and I was like, wow, I'm spending so much time in the car or, you know, I'm feeling really rushed in the morning. Like, mm-hmm. how, how might I be able to shift that just a little bit so yeah. that it feels a little bit more easeful? Okay. This is making way more sense to me because yeah. when you were saying the perfect day, I'm like, that sounds really woo, Yolanda. Pat, Pat yeah. Yolanda, the head. Oh, what a lovely, <laughs> lovely little thought. Good what for a you. Concept. So it's really yeah. kind of thinking about, okay, what would that ideal day feel like? How do I, once again, going with how do I want to feel in my body? What do I want to experience? So that I walk into the day or I have the day that feels more, more smooth, more relaxing, not as burny on fire. And, and it's funny that you're like, do I want to roll out of bed? Because there are like, yes, that is Cindy has a tendency and I have changed this over the years, but I used to be like, oh, it's eight o'clock. I have to be in my therapy chair at nine. Let me roll out at eight. And my husband's like, I don't know how you get dressed in 20 minutes. And I'm like, well, it's called growing up in a locker room in high school with 50 other girls that have to get ready. So, but, you know, that, but then I'm like, like, it's like a little chaotic, right? And like, ah! and so instead, how do you want to do Get up. My husband actually does this really well. He, oh, and it drives me bananas, but he is the guy who's like, no, I want to get up. I want to watch the news. It used to be a long time ago. It used to be read the paper. Now he watch, he watches, the, it's like watch the news or listen to something before he get, gets ready for his day. He drinks a pot of coffee. Yes, a pot, a pot of coffee. Um, and then he would take a shower, get his uniform on and he'd go to work. And that didn't matter if he got up like two hours, which I thought was insane before he had to leave, I was like, what are you doing? Sleep. And he's like, no, I want my day to start nice. Well, yeah. And compared to like, you mentioned the word chaotic a a minute Mm -hmm. ago, right? If it's feeling chaotic and I don't want it to feel chaotic, what would not chaos look like? And and a little bit of chaos is is an ideal for me. Maybe I want to change that. (laughs) Right. Right? Or, you know, like is, doom scrolling four hours on your phone, part of your perfect day. No. Okay. So I I don't think anybody would say that. (laughs) Yes. Four hours on TikTok is, um, that's that's my ideal day. I don't think anybody says that. Yeah. So it's like like, like that intentionality, right? Yeah. So you go through your whole day, like Mm -hmm. map that out Uh and then look for ways to adjust. Yeah. This part is not feeling like that. Like what is one little micro step that I can Mm. take in that direction, Mm -hmm. right? If I want my mornings to be less chaotic, then what would it be like to get up 15 minutes earlier? Oh, okay. Well, that's nice. Okay. What if I scoot it back another 15 minutes? Yeah. What does that allow for me? You know, so it's, it's just kind of being, it's, it's a, a combination of intentionality and curiosity. I love that intentionality and curiosity because you're like experimenting. Is yeah, what I hear. It's an experiment. Yeah. yeah. And then with a little dose of like, why am I doing what I'm doing? How is this fitting in? And permission slips, I think, must go in there too, as long as, as well as your mantras, because I'm thinking about people that are putting their be- be- kids to bed earlier, like, and getting that done earlier. And then, you know, it's like, okay, well, I want time to myself. And sometimes that comes with a permission slip and a mantra because this is going to make you a better human and not be burnt and you're not going to be burning. Right. That's hard, but but so good. It sounds so easy, yeah. but I think it's hard. It's it's a lot of work. It it honestly yeah. is. It's a it's a lot of work. I can it's hear a lot it. of work. And it's an it's an and it's an ongoing process. Like I think the work is worth it. I think anything worth doing takes some work, right? Yeah. But I think that it pays off. I, I, it's been my experience that like living life in this way is a much better choice for me mm-hmm. and my relationships mm-hmm. than doing it numbed out and like burnt out. Yeah. So are you an expert now? Are you perfect at the, at the non-burnout? Are you, have you perfected burnout prevention? Cindy, have you, did you read my recent newsletter that went out to my community that said, 
I relapsed. Yeah. 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 And that's so right. It's yeah. like we're not going to be part of recovery. At it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, relapse is part of recovery. Now, the relapse wasn't a bender. It's not as it like the relapse wasn't as bad as what it's been in the past. I'm right? sorry to laugh. I just love that you were like the relapse wasn't a bender. I mean, I didn't go full out. <laughs> Okay. I, I, I like I was noticing the warning signs and I'm like, oh shit. Oh yeah, yeah that thing. Okay. Yeah. Let's get back on track. Yeah. Right. And so 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 it's like a refocus of that intentionality, just like with anything, you know, you it's in place for a little while. You're like, ah, I'm good. Let me kind of dance around, you know, like that over functioning part of myself. It's very like persuasive. Damn neuropathways. Oh, just, yeah, just this one. So this thing, it's fine. You'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be um, fine. Yeah. So and this is like a, one of those moments where I'm like, this is why I, this is why I started doing it this different way. Like this is, this is confirmation. Yes. Yeah. So okay. The thing is, is that we're not going to be perfect. It is a, it's a journey, right? And that's one thing that I know in your book, even like the. So her book is Soul Sabbatical. And it's it says a journey to revive the heart. And so first of all, journey, journey, not a destination. So this is a journey. And one of the things that I loved, and I'm going to get it wrong, but you said something about listening to your heart along the way. And that was so, like for me, that really resonated of like, hey, like make space for what brings you that joy and making space. and. First of all, I think identifying, right? What brings you that joy like you've talked about and then making space for it in these small moments, but continually looking out for what that is, that your your body, your soul, your spirit, however you want to think about it, needs to refresh, renew, and experience life and not just like trudge through it. Yeah. And, and for me, it is a spiritual practice. This is a Mm -hmm. spiritual, not a religious, there's a big distinction for me between religiosity and and spirituality, but this is a spiritual practice for me to stay connected with myself in a deep way. And in the process of doing that, being able to love myself in a different, in a deeper way, not a narcissistic way, right? but to love myself deeper more deeply to, to allow myself to be loved more deeply and allowing that love to go out into the world and in service and serve in that sense of duty from that love instead of a part of myself that's going to get tapped out and burnt out. Yeah. I think there's, when you're thinking about reframing and the way you're reframing, right? It's really like, I love that you call it a spiritual practice. And I agree. I think there's something different between religiosity and spirituality, but tapping into ourselves and serving out of joy, out of love. And I know that, you know, you can get cynical. We we get cynical in this, this lifestyle. We get cynical because of what we see and hear. And you, you touch people every day in the sense of how you change their lives. And so it's important to focus on those that you're doing, not, you know, there's a lot of things we can't control and we have to focus on what we can control. And that can be a challenge as well. It can be, but that's part of the intentionality too. And Mm -hmm. I think sometimes it's, it's kind of reframing or like, what is my definition of quote unquote success? Is it the productivity? Is it the, the, the metrics, you know, in, in writing this book, I've also done a TED talk and I had to get really clear for myself in, in both of these things. Quote unquote success is not a viral TED talk. It's not a best selling book. Mm. It is if one person hears the message of the TED talk, reads the book, and has one small component land for them, that makes it all worth it. That is meaningful. Yeah. And that's the way to live your life. And that's what this is about, right? So a couple of different things that I want to go back and highlight is that one of the first things that I love that, Yolanda, that you said was that we focus on duty to others, but in order to do that, we have to focus on our duty to ourselves. 
And how do we take care of ourselves and not in a woo-woo, like stop the world kind of way, but being intentional about little things along the way. Staying and really, it's like really staying focused on who you want to be at your core, not allowing, um, you know, you're going to be impacted and infected by what you see and do every day. This this lifestyle will, will impact you. What's important, though, is that you are determining the type of human that you are and you want to be. So when you when you leave this field, you're not so far off base from who you want to be as a human. So being coming back to that intentional, who do you want to be? What's the joy you want to experience? What's the experience that you want to have with your family, your connectedness, the relationships? And then... From the intentional, doing these small, tiny behaviors, moving towards that feeling that you want to feel, whether that's maybe you need to use some permission slips, maybe that you need to have a mantra in there, maybe you just need to be more present, and using that perfect day exercise to say, and be, but being realistic, right? To say, like, how do you want to feel th- through your day? Not that you want to wake up on a beach or a mountain. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And so using all of those as a practice on this journey to prevent burnout. Is that a pretty good synopsis? I think that's a beautiful synopsis. And, and all of those things allow us to leave the legacy that we are wanting to leave, the impact Absolutely. that we're wanting to make. Yeah. Yeah. So beautiful. Yolanda's book, if you're looking at me, it, this is it. It is Soul Sabbatical. Yeah. And I know you can get it on Amazon. It is a, it's, Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, easy read book. It's not something that, um, it's joy to me to read it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like heavy, heavy, but Mm -hmm. walking through. And I actually read it and then went back and said, oh, I need to do these exercises now (laughs) because Mm -hmm. there's exercises in here. Is there a journal that goes with it too? Or am I crazy? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. There's a journal that goes with it as well. Okay. And so- all of that on where can people pick up the book? Yeah, um, on Amazon, other online bookstores. My website is yolandaharper.com. You can get um, you can get the the book and the journal there, or the combo from there. You can also sign up for the Soul Sabbatical newsletter there. I'm hoping to build like a, just a countercultural revolution of you know just non burned out present. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yolanda, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for writing the book. Thank you for sharing your story because in sharing your story, I know, you know, you were talking about who who can I impact if it's just one person. And I know that there are people listening to this today that they're going to be like, I'm going to take that little nugget and use it. So I, I appreciate you putting yourself out there and sharing it with everybody here. Final words of wisdom for anybody. You know, it's relationality for the win and let's all be in relationships with ourselves in a way that allows us to be in closer connection with the people around us and with our communities and with the world. I love that. Thank you so much. Yeah, it does. Thank you so much for being here. Guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this podcast. Um, I know we went a little longer than we normally go. Hopefully you have learned some practices that you can implement and use, even if it's just one, one little nugget that you do. I think what I'm taking away from this, once again, is this is a practice and a journey and taking the time, whether it's, I mean, ideally would be daily, but maybe if you just do it weekly to kind of reassess where you are, where you want to be, and then we can all be a part of this journey in a more successful way. Uh, but then also walk away from this career in a healthy way and with healthy relationships and healthy bodies. So thank you again, Yolanda. Guys, I will have all the links. If you are on your device, make sure you click on the show notes and you will see all of Yolanda's links down there if you want to grab her book and the workbook or follow her um, or sign up for her newsletter, all that stuff. Uh, Also, I have my freebie and opt-in there. If you have not signed up for my emails, or if you want to get updates on the podcast, you can do that there. 
and of course, like and follow and share this with other people that you see are burning out and you think they would benefit from it as well, because I'm sure there are a lot of people that are going to be um, going to benefit from listening to this information. So, and until next time, guys, y'all keep it code for take care. Don't forget to click that subscribe button on your device or get email updates by going to code4couples.com. While you're on the website, make sure you pick up my 71-page workbook and guide that goes with my book, The Essential Guide to Protecting Your Law Enforcement Relationship. Drop in the code podcast and download the workbook for free. Until next time, y'all, keep it code four. Thanks for joining us. For more information about the podcast or Cindy, check out code4couples.com. All intellectual property rights owned by CRLD2 Ventures, LLC, are protected by the firm of 9mm, 45ACP, 5.56mm, and 12-gauge. Mm-hmm.